Hello, I'm Jim Negri, Superintendent of the Castor Valley Unified School District. This presentation is designed to provide you with an overview of the Local Control Accountability Plan, or LCAP. California has a new funding model for schools, which is known as Local Control Funding Formula, or LCFF. LCFF requires that the district gather input from all stakeholders as it develops learning goals for students. There are three outcomes for this presentation. First, I want to provide you with an overview of LCFF. It is the first significant change in school funding in over 40 years, and as I noted, it requires the district to develop an LCAP. Second, I want to share with you ways that you can provide your input on the development of the LCAP. And finally, I would like to review the timeline for the development of the LCAP. This year, California significantly changed how it funds schools. In the past, districts received funding based on the number of students plus additional funding for special programs or services. This additional funding was called categorical funding and included programs like K-3 class size reduction and instructional materials. LCFF will provide eventually the same base amount for every student in the state. That is the left side of the chart. Categorical funding is now included in the base amount and is to be used to serve all students. Once the district receives its base amount, there are adjustments to the funding. One adjustment is by grade level, K3, 4, 6, 7, 8, and 9, 12. That is the right side of the chart. The amounts vary by grade levels to recognize the cost differences in programs. Then another adjustment is made by student demographics, which is also on the right side of the chart. Additional funding is provided for low-income or socially economically disadvantaged students, English learners, and foster youth. While LCFF provides funding for these groups of students, the district must provide high-quality programs and services for all students. For the LCAP, the State Board of Education established eight priorities for student learning that all districts must address. These priorities apply to all students and include student achievement, student engagement, common core standards, school climate, parental involvement, course access, basic services which includes appropriately credentialed teachers, and sufficient instructional materials, and finally, other student outcomes. As a district, we have identified the academic performance of our African American, Hispanic, Latino, and special needs students as a focus area. After identifying the eight LCAP priorities, the State Board of Education then reorganized the priorities into three broad categories or buckets. The first category, labeled Conditions of Learning, focuses on the implementation of Common Core State Standards, student access to courses and curriculum in all grades, the sufficiency of instructional materials, having fully credentialed teachers in the classroom, and having quality facilities. The second category, Pupil Outcomes, focuses on student achievement, which traditionally has been the STAR test, the advanced placement exams, and the California High School X exam. This year, without results from STAR tests or the new Smarter Balance test, we will need to develop local measures of student achievement. The final category, Engagement, addresses parental involvement, student engagement, and school climate. Historically, school climate has been measured solely by attendance and discipline rates. But as a district, we want to focus on the positive aspects of school climate that exist in this district. 
Districts have never been asked to report performance data on parental involvement and student engagement, so we will need to develop effective measures of these priorities. Now, I'd like to focus briefly on what does LCAP mean for us as a district. First, LCAP will establish learning goals for all students, not just the students generating the supplemental LCFF funding. Second, input from all stakeholders will be shared with the LCAP Steering Committee as it develops learning goals. Besides parent meetings, there will be a district survey for your input. Information on how to participate in this survey is at the end of the presentation. Third, the District 2014-15 budget will represent the LCAP goals and how LCFF funds will be spent to meet the academic needs of all students. And finally, the LCAP will be aligned with all site and district plans to tell the district story for student learning. Using input from our stakeholders, the LCAP Steering Committee will develop a plan that promotes learning for all students while focusing on English learners, socially economically disadvantaged, and foster youth. Using our own achievement data, we have identified African American, Hispanic Latino, and special needs students with disabilities as another focus area. Before we begin looking at student achievement data, it will be helpful to look at the district demographic profile. These percentages are based on our student enrollment in October 2012 on CBEDS, the state reporting system. This is the most current state data. While LCAP does not focus on exactly the same groups of students, it is helpful to see the data. In October 2012, there were 9,210 students in the district. As the graph shows, the three largest group of students were white, Hispanic, Latino, and Asian, who made up approximately 80% of our student population, with another 10% of our students identifying as two or more races. CBEDS does not break out the two or more races categories. As we begin to look at the achievement data, I would like you to focus on the patterns that you see in the chart, as well as your personal experience in the district, to help you understand what we need to do as we develop LCAP goals. I'm not going to spend time analyzing the data, but I want you to have an overview of student achievement by the subgroups. One measure of student achievement that the district is required to report is the percentage of students who score advanced and proficient on the STAR test. This chart shows the percentage of students by subgroup scoring advanced and proficient on the 2013 STAR test in English language arts. The district-wide average at the bottom of the chart was 77.3%, but the state target was 89.1%. Therefore, no subgroup met the state target. As you look at the chart, notice the differences between subgroups. We will need to address ways to improve the achievement of all students in English language arts in the LCAP goals. The next chart shows the percentage of students scoring advanced and proficient on the 2013 STAR test in mathematics. The district-wide average, the bottom bar, was 75.9%. The state target, however, was 89%. Only the Asian subgroup met the state target. Again, as you look at the chart, notice the difference between subgroups. Again, we will need to address ways to improve the achievement of all students in mathematics in the LCAP goals. This chart shows the percentage of students by subgroup who graduated based on district graduation requirements. District-wide, 95.7% of our students earned a diploma in the 
2011-12 school year, the most current year for state data. Some students do earn a high school diploma later through alternative programs. Special needs students can also earn a certificate of completion and continue their education in the district up to age 22. In order for a student to successfully meet the district's graduation requirements, the student needs a sound academic foundation starting in elementary school that continues on through middle school and into high school. While graduation rates are often used to measure the performance of a high school, the actual rate depends on a high quality academic program throughout a student's K-12 years. Again, as you look at the chart, Notice the differences between subgroups. On the previous chart, you saw the percentage of students who met district graduation requirements. This chart shows the percentage of students who graduated from the district completing all the coursework required to be eligible for admission to the University of California and the state, California State University systems, district-wide, 52.9% of our students graduate meeting the UC CSU eligibility requirements. As on the previous charts, focus on the patterns that you see. As you look at this chart, it's important to understand that the coursework required to graduate from the district is not identical to the coursework required to be eligible for admission to UC and CSU. There are factors to consider, such as students may enroll in classes that meet the district graduation requirements, but do not meet the UCCSU re eligibility requirements. Students may pass a course for graduation, but not with a grade that meets the CSU UC eligibility requirements. Not all of our students plan to attend a four-year college or university, so they do not enroll in a sufficient number of UC CSU eligible courses. Our students do attend four-year colleges and universities, the community college system, vocational schools, enter the military, and the world of work. As the district works to ensure that all students are college and career ready, your input on what college and career ready means will be critical. As you consider the development of LCAP goals, consider this overarching question. What goals or priorities for student learning should be included in each of the buckets or categories to ensure the success of all students? Now, I'd like you to think about these three questions. What programs or services are essential to maintain in order to ensure the success of all students? Secondly, what programs or services are essential to improve or add to ensure the success of all students? And finally, what other suggestions do you have to improve student learning and achievement for all students? you can provide me your input at the email address on the next slide. Please send me your input regarding the questions at lcapinput at cv.k1.ca.us. And I encourage you to take the survey that you can find on the district website www.cv.k12.ca.us under breaking news. Your input will be critical. This chart shows you a timeline for the development of the LCAP. It is a rigorous timeline but also very doable. As I've mentioned, parent meetings are being held throughout the district and input from these meetings as well as input from the survey results and the emails will be shared with the steering committee. The steering committee will be composed of parents and community members representing the subgroups, secondary school students, site and district administrators, and certificated and classified staff. A draft of the LCAP will be presented for public hearing 
before it is presented to the Board of Education for adoption in May. Throughout March and April, the steering committee will be doing much of the writing and you will have an opportunity to provide input before it finally goes to the board. Again, thank you for taking time to learn about LCAP and I encourage you to provide your input at lcapinput at cv.k12.ca.us and again, please take the survey on the district website at www.cv.k12.ca.us. Again, thank you very much for taking the time to learn about LCAP.